Welcome back to Geralt. Tries to collect his Skellige deck from across the landscape. We're still in the turning grounds where yet another NPC is available. Ah, a professional. I like to trade with your kind. You actually appreciate quality workmanship. Quality mark working ship ship of your deck. Care for a quick round of Gwent. An appropriate amount of stammering. <laughs> All right, good old Northern Realms. This one should be a sweep, right? I'm just kind of cycling between the three decks over and over again. Uh, we'll see what happens when I lose games. I'll either switch decks or I'll try the same deck again. In the case of Nilfgaard last episode, I was fairly confident that I had a bad hit draw, so I tried again. Didn't ha still didn't have the best round afterwards, but I at least won. Wow, I have three spies already. That totally throws up in the air what the actual results of this round are going to be. Three spies and two decoys. Is that too many decoys? I mean, fun could be had with those decoys, to be sure. With some of these powerful deck set cards I have right here. Damn. Do I want to keep blue stripes around? I think I'm just going to commit to this hand and see what happens, honestly. Alright, so the entire first round is going to be me playing Spies over and over again. We'll see how they react to that. I'll play the toughest Spy first. Because if I give him enough of a numerical lead in points, he might actually pass the round. Being like, oh wow, he's just giving me the round, fine. But I might be able to still salvage it at that point. The, t the danger there is the constant back and forth, like, do I let, do I let him win because of, uh, do I, do I, uh, do I let him have the rest of the round assuming I'm going to win, or do I, oh, there it goes, yep. Alright. So now I'm free to keep playing these, and then we'll figure out how to counter them afterwards. I'm just going to play all of them because my hand's going to be so huge. And then I'll just carefully select specific cards to beat him, ooh. Ah, uh, but the five. If I started with fours, we could kill two fours at once, and that'd be pretty tough. But even then, uh, one Scorch could go a long way. Is that all my spies? I believe that's all of them. Alright, so now I, I've had a 14, which is a pretty damn strong start. And he's got a hand of 10, so we've got a bit of a lead there. We, can, we have toys to play with. And I have a medic with a... Uh, yeah, medic with two decoys, so I could I could revive three things potentially. Okay, that gives me some maneuverability room. So since we can revive a lot, I'm gonna want to play relatively powerful cards to, to in order to beat his number of uh, his level of power with as few cards as possible. So he has 14. I just need to get 15 points as fast as possible. Uh, these two are fives. If you put them together. So they're 10 total, but if you put them together, they become 20. That's two relatively quickly, so it's pretty powerful. Probably what I'm gonna go with. I could play these guys too for the same results, but they're more powerful and it's more of a risk. And I don't want to 100% assume that I'm gonna correctly be able to use my medic to get everything I want, just in case the variables change while I'm playing. So these guys are lower risk to get the same result with only two cards. Maintaining a strong uh, point advantage while also Maintain the possibility of using the medic in the future to get 20 points on the board. Or so I think. Seriously, my freaking... My Northern Realms deck is so consistently effective. <laughs> it's no wonder that I beat the main tournament with it. Ooh! We drew another tight bond. We have two tight bonds and three heroes, which of course I'll start with them first. Because like, because we're fighting Skellige still, I want to win as fast as possible. I want to avoid the third round at all costs, so that's going to be a very high value turn. Why do you have that? Oh right, Gaunter, despite being a muster monster, is a neutral party. I forget that sometimes because it's so thoroughly a monster card, his uh, his shades or whatever they're called. Shadows? Really fits with the color scheme of the uh, that the enemy's using right now too. Alright, I have 30 on the board. I have 30 on the board and a... I have 30 on the board and I have a freaking now four card advantage. Alright, well. He is not gonna feel good. Oh, he's got a six. Damn it. I saw all those fours on the board. I'm like, I can't wait to scorch these. And then I realized the one outlier there that makes it tougher. That said, I might want to get scorching because. Yeah. Let's see. I get rid of wither effects, right? 
Yeah. The whole point of using that sp that special ability is that I get to just completely ignore weather and not even incorporate it into my deck for the entire game. Which gets rid of my one of my biggest weaknesses, which is that having a bunch of units on the board opens you up to, uh, counters. Um... I'm gonna Warhorn the Siege Row. Because that's where we're ultimately going to use three of the units that are currently in my hand for a lot of power. But it's also a stalling tactic to get him to play, no play another card. That's another four. Is it time to go Scorching? You guys are both fives. Yeah? I have fives and eights on the board. If I don't want to Scorch my own units, I'm gonna start Scorching now. There's the, he's got four fours, so I can take out literally every unit he has on the board right now, unless he plays something more powerful. Instead, he plays something equally powerful, making it even worse. <laughs> cool. <laughs> now he's got zero, and I've got 30. Is he gonna pass? Oh wait, he can't pass, because the game's over. Oh no! Wait, what? You had... What? You had Gaunter and you played his Shadows and I guess it was a stalling tactic to make his turns last longer, because if you played Gaunter, the Shadows would have been also withdrawn from his hand, he would have had few fewer options in his hand at that point. But damn. Damn. Alright, we'll start with the weaker units, so that in case he does have a Scorch, at least I don't lose anything particularly valuable, and it'll be up to me if I want to try to re revive them at that point. Fighting Frost, okay. You're running out of cards now, and I'm very interested in seeing what you've got. I'm gonna hold on to that medic for as long as possible to avoid dealing with the downsides of stuff. And I'll get rid of his, uh... That's a Scorch. It's Scorched itself. Hit... What? The fuck? That... Wh what? What's the description on that card? Kill the strongest cards in the bed. <laughs> it's just a global Scorch? And he used it and it killed itself! <laughs> Oh, what, is his last card a medic, or is he really just gonna commit to that one? Okay. I'm just gonna go ahead and stall again by using my leader card. Get rid of the weather. I'll feel a little silly if his next card's also a weather card, but at this point he has two power on the board. He passed. Well. I'm just gonna say that this is literally the most opportune situation I've had in the history of playing this game. And it was a pleasure being here with you all. I have 110 uh, points, and I haven't even finished doing what I'm gonna do now. Oh man, we're gonna have some fun today. Just gonna play this one out for the sake of it, honestly. Hey, Medic, how you doing back in my hand? Isn't that fun? You get back out there. Wow. 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 So, for the record... The, the absurdity of this scenario is that I just ended... I just ended the round with zero power. There's zero power in my entire graveyard. My winning round ha is the full capacity of all the power that I've ever drawn, not only in my starting hand, but but all of the effects of all the thieves. Oh wait, that's not true. Technically the thieves had power and they're in his graveyard, so that much is was spent on him, I guess. Still though, what the, this is insane. And I can freaking, I can even dummy again. There's just no reason to, because I can't revive anything. <laughs> Wow. Well, that was neat. <laughs> Take that game. Oh. Wow. One of those moments where you realize how... There's a little moments, like, I, like, I love this game, but... One of the quirks of how poorly... The uh, Witcher sometimes controls. By, by the Witcher, I mean specifically Geralt, not the, with the game in general. I, I guess it technically is the game in general at that point, isn't it? Is there two more over there? There is two more over there. They're all bunched up together. A uh, side effect of how poorly the uh, thing can control at times is right, right there. Like, take one minor step and boom, forward, flip, tumble, psycho mode. Whoa! Drama, drama. <laughs> to see here. It's just su such a comical and dramatic response. I love it. <laughs> I love it, but man, there's definitely been moments in the game when I'm not just lounging around playing Gwent where the way he controls is actually a headache. Hey, buddy old pal. Where have we found ourselves today? We're now in Beauclair Port. So we're in the lar yep, we're in the grand city of Beauclair, where we'll be spending quite a bit of time. There's at least six people to challenge here. 
could have saved this for last, I suppose, because it kind of feels like a finale, but oh well. So out of 10, 60% of the remaining opponents are somewhere around here. Right. You're just the outside guard. My, ma my mistake. Step into my parlor, my good sir. What brings you to Tucson? Tell me. Hmm. Let's call it business. Ah, then. A professional journey. Nothing but work, tension, unfamiliar beds. One needs a way to relax at times. Perhaps my ghost could help you. Interested in the unusual. Got a special request. Just need to keep this between you and me. You know, well, I shouldn't. Hey, who cares? How might I help? Gwent. You play? One of the craziest things would have been if this game actually had fully voiced dialogue for all of the, uh... If we had a fully di voiced dialogue for every character you talk to about also playing Gwent. Because, yeah, throughout the entire campaign they kind of just awkwardly nod at you. Because they just can't, like... That, it would be a crazy amount of work to add a, a line about Gwent for every character who can never play Gwent. Because they probably don't even plan in advance to say who will play Gwent, honestly. Uh, they probably just eventually like, alright, we need some Gwent players, we'll pick these characters. So, we got Geralt and Triss. It's weird how Triss... It's, I, it's almost like a joke at her expense, isn't it? She's a special card. But, she's like the worst special card in the entire game, right? I spent, like, I got her early on and didn't really question it, I think. But or, as I played more and more of this game, I want to say that every single special card in the entire game, unless I'm, I could be wrong, I think all of them have 10 power, right? Geralt and Ciri have 15. I think every other special card in the entire game has 10. And then, uh, obviously Mysterious Elf has zero, but he's a spy. And then Triss and Yennefer both have seven. But Yennefer's saving grace is her medic power, while Triss is just a weak special card. It's, that, it's just that middle ground of like, it's useful because it can't be scorched, but it sucks because it can't be horned. Uh, wait. Speaking on from muster perspective, I have two vampires, so I mean, need to immediately replace one of those. Gaunter! Oh. Well, I'll replace you then. What'd I draw? Ooh! This is a kind of versatile deck. And, I mean... I got three special cards. One of them is bonus power. One of them is kind of weak, unfortunately. A werewolf as a, as a generic unit, but I've got the ability to go after the enemy's siege weapons? Yeah. I have an anti-siege weapon card when my only siege weapon is a level t is a two power card, so it's not really a loss of power. And then I have a scorch card to take out their groups. Granted, I can be susceptible to scorch myself. And I have a decoy to draw characters back, but ah. Uh... Okay, the the scorch and decoy might be a little iffy on its usefulness to some extent, but uh, all these muster cards means that I can draw. I essentially have more cards in my hand than it looks like, although without a Warhorn, I can't power them up, and some of them aren't that powerful. Um, and my power again is... pick any weather card and play it. Yeah, the versatility is nice. Let's start strong, I guess. See if they immediately scorch it or not. Either way, it's a 14... it's a 14 turn. Oh! Ew! What? Oh yeah, first of all, he's playing Scoia'tael as a noteworthy thing. I was, I was starting to think they were all going to play a Skellige. But this is a Scoia'tael deck. I'm concerned that he has a muster card in his deck, but no... Oh, she, I forgot we were playing with a brothel owner. Uh, she has a muster card with no additional muster cards in her entire deck of that type? Maybe she just really values having a 5 power? I still don't understand why this card exists and why you'd ever use it. She might have a terrible deck, to be honest. Yeah, she might have a terrible deck. She has a one power ranged card that she hasn't replaced with anything somehow. And she has a five power muster, but with no other musters in it, which means that she just has it in her deck because it's a five power, like that's good for her. So she may be in a bad place, all things considered. Let's go with another, we'll go with vampires next. All right. 
I have a five on the board now, so now she's gonna need two Scorches to take out all these guys. Instead, she passed. Okay. Uh, I'm going to, of course, pass then. Obviously. No reason to keep playing. And since she's Scoia'tael, I could lure her out a little bit. Let's see, I have to go first, right? Yeah. Yeah, let's just lure her out. She has to beat a five, which means she has to play something reasonably powerful from her hand. And then I can waste this turn. She played a six. But, like, I don't lose my card. She just stays there. And now I can start going strong with all of my heroes, which I will play consecutively. No reason to play a decoy, really, unless they throw a spy my way, but so far that hasn't happened. She may not have any in her deck at all. Now the question here is, does her deck suck because... Ooh! Didn't really expect this opportunity to arise, but here we go. <laughs> a stack of units that are, weaker, are stronger than my current card. Uh, the question here is whether or not her deck sucks because her deck sucks, or if her deck sucks because it's Scoia'tael. Because <laughs> honestly... I... The, I can't... Have we fought any tough Scoia'tael decks outside of the tournament? And even inside the tournament, wasn't the Scoia'tael deck still one of the easier decks I fought? I want to say it was. I don't remember the tournament very well, though. That was like... Six to eight months ago, I want to say. It's been a long time since I, pl I was playing up the main campaign. We had to wait for two expansions to come out. Uh, you're running out of cards and you're not even close to powering up. That's concerning. I have no siege weapon cards, right? Yeah, let's just go ahead and play you. Just to preemptively screw over any siege weapons she chooses to pick, potentially. Oh, Biting Frost. That's not very nice, but it's not gonna beat my specials. It also is hurting you, but it'll- yeah, it'll beat my- it'll hurt my future units, too. Admittedly. Pick any weather card from your deck and play it instantly. Doesn't that include clear weather? It does. Doesn't it? Oops. You, pr you press square to play your leader card. Oh, that, there we go. Yeah, clear weather. I, f I wasn't 100% sure if that would count, but I remember last time it showed up when I checked that card. Wow, he's- yep. Crushed. <laughs> no competition this time. It'll be interesting once I have my full Skellige deck to then learn Skellige and then try to use it in a tournament. Where, where it might be a tough tournament, for all I know. Uh, there's no reason to decoy. We're, we won. Ta-da! By a fair margin, too. It's a hell of a spread when the only the only round she won, she round but uh, sh the only round she won, she won by one point. Uh, is this... It must be underground, right? Yep. Oh, it's a butcher. Sausages, hounds, patties! Are you ready for shirtless Gwent? No, you're busy, but you up for a round of Gwent? This is no minor amount of money, by the way. From my perspective, I look at a hundred crowns and I'm like, eh. But from their perspective, like, they... Like, how much were... I'm trying to remember now, when, like, when that guy's... That guy was protecting that, that, uh, nearly extinct Draconid. Or Basilisk, or whatever it was. And, uh... They would kill people. He would only give them, like, a thousand or, like, a few hundred crowns or something. Like, it wasn't an impressive number. I'm... I'm betting a hundred crowns, or I'm, I'm, or I'm getting or lo gaining or losing a hundred crowns based on whether or not I uh, win a card game. <laughs> the hell of a thing when you think about it that that way. Oh god! All right. Um. Well, we're muster heavy. How do I always draw Fringilla? It's getting weird now. It's only one card. All three, cons all three of my games of uh, Nilf cards so far, I've come with her. Triss again. Got two medics again. No spies, really. That's a bummer. Do I... The question is, do I want to swap out Triss or Frangilla, or maybe the Impera Brigade Guards? Maybe those guys, honestly. Ooh. Ooh. Double medic. That's fun. You're playing a Skella again? Yeah, so once again, I don't want to make this... I don't want this to reach the final round. 
So we'll start off with some of these mustard cards, for example. I have one, two, I have three medics. So I can play a lot of powerful cards, actually. Yes, ignore, maybe not even the muster cards. Let's just start playing archers. Because I can revive them, and they're ten each. Oh, yeah. Come right out with the Siri type cards. Let's go full bore into this. I'm hoping you'll get scared and pass. Not yet. To be fair, when you have a spy, you want to play it. Still, though, uh, I mean, it's 15 to 10. He's got a lead still. I mean, he's got a, he's got a good chunk of points for one card. Uh, let's see, three medics. So I can play one more special that can still come back safely. Fringil is a good choice. 26 to 15. Pass, 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 pass. No. Oh, a muster. Is it going to come from his hand? It did. He drew one from his hand. That's not bad. He is winning now, though. I may go with the muster cards just to put the pressure on. The scary thing about playing these muster cards is that if they muster... I mean, sorry, if they tight bond, they'll get uh, 10 power each. That'll make that'll leave me with four characters with 10 power each that can all be uh, scorched. And I don't want that. So I'm gonna try it with Triss instead as the more disposable of the specials. Pass. pa ow. You can't even scorch anyone with that, you just played it to, for the sake of it. Huh. Okay, damn it, I was kind of hoping he'd be, uh... passing by now. I'll stick with the normal card. Yeah. I mean a special card, but one that doesn't have any... medical powers. Please pass. It's like, a, oh, serious. All right. It's kind of agonizing how they're beating me by one point. Okay. I can take a hint. <laughs> We're not going to beat you when you have 80 points on the board. Crap. Oh, that's bad. That's real bad. I'm going all in because I'm trying to win the first round, but they're going to win the first round at this rate. I mean, they, they have... that's it. That's over. They won the first round now. Uh... Because I can't reasonably close that gap. The problem is that if I don't win the first round, we're going to reach the third round where they're going to have more power as a result. And that's concerning. That said, we have established I can draw whatever card I want, so maybe I can lure them into a trap where I can destroy his close combat units with this card by drawing it from the graveyard. We'll have to see. At this point, I have to pass. This is not... I can't make up 37 points and have anything to play next round. That was a hell of a jump. That said, he, he used Mysterious Elf this game. And he's already behind me on cards. He went full in with those musters, and it gave him a problem. Alright. I gotta start with medics, right? No, maybe? Let's see. I think we established last, in a previous game, that these... When it says enemy, it really means enemy. So I can play my own melee units, and it won't be that much of a problem. So let's go in, go in with my muster cards. Oh. Look a smartass over here, huh? Okay. Well. There's my lead. It's time for- he's winning- he's- they're just- they're doing what I did before, where you play one card and you try to stall for round three. And he had one card that was one power more powerful than mine. Alright, I get my victory for this round, but... He- he closed the gap on the turn- on the, uh... Card count. All right, you're not bad at this. Ooh. Here's some good news, though. When he drew from his graveyard, he did, he only drew for these four power cards. Uh, he did not draw... the Scorch. So let's keep that in the back of my head as, as something to use against him. I just want to... I want to wait for him to play some powerful cards for the front row. In the meantime, let's get my medics on the board and revive those ten power archers from earlier. 
I may win this. Yeah, actually, I think I'm pretty. It's pretty stacked in my favor at this point. I think. Oh yeah, I think I think it's I think their deck ran out of momentum. I think they over. I think they over invested in the first round. They will do Yennefer next. I'm a little worried he might scorch, but even at that point, I don't know if it mat will matter. He's going to be out of cards, even if he can't scorch my tens. I don't know if he can make up the difference even. Also, if he scorches now, I can still revive them next. Oh, he is... He, he's doomed. If, if he's, uh... If he's warhorning the siege row that has no one in it, he may not have any strategies right now. Or he's waiting to see what I'll do. Ah. Uh, they need to have ten in the front row for me to scorch them, right? That's a bummer. I'm gonna hold off just in case, and do my next... Oh wait, if I use my last card, it might end the game. I don't know if it'll automatically end the game or not. Let's just use, let's just use a leader card. See, so you're the most powerful, right? Yeah, let's just do it. Oh right, it goes into my hand. It's actually a stalling tactic. I forgot about- I keep forgetting about that. I keep thinking it has to be played. Nope! He didn't draw another- he didn't use another melee card, so I win. Let's just play these next cards. And just enjoy my lead. Got it. Yep, opponent's passed, because I can't do anything else. And we'll just bring in our most powerful card, which in this case is Fringilla again. There we go. A nice healthy lead, but not nearly as broken as the Northern Realms tends to get. You seek something? I've got it. I'm sure you do. If that thing is very specifically chopped meat. <laughs>